at this level, you know, don't be afraid to to go for something like this if you know what you're doing, right? Don't play a move like knight g5 just because it looks cool. Make a move like this when you have a very specific aim in mind, such as, yeah, I want to take on e6. I want to eliminate the light squared bishop, and then I want to attack the pawn that's going to be on that weak square. Let's do a, a reduced, uh, let's do a game light. You know, let's do a game where we don't analyze it quite as deeply, if that's fine with you guys, and we'll do a 10 minute game with no increment. Okay. Um, um, soupy. 100 bits, thank you. Let's go e4. e6, so a French. And you guys already know, those of you who have watched the speedrun for a while know what I do against the French. And I play the Giannatos variation. Um, Peter actually introduced me to it, and we're going to play it again. Okay, no we're not, because White's going to play a6. That is not a move that you see every day, although it is a move. Believe it or not, a6 is, is a move. Now, when you face such moves, there's nothing in particular that you should do. You should simply develop your pieces, so knight f3 seems very reasonable here. Not knight c3, because we want to be able to play c3 when the moment is right. C5, okay. So black is trying to transpose the game into a con Sicilian. I mean, if we play knight c3 here, black takes on d4 and we have a transposition. But of course, we are not going to play knight c3. We are going to punish black for this amount of pawn moves. How do we do that? We play principal chess. We push that pawn down to d5. And this is almost like a Benoni structure, but black has lost a bunch of tempi on weird pawn moves. And... You know, this could get very problematic if black is not super precise in, in such positions. Knight f6, okay? I mean, that's a reasonable move. That's a reasonable move. Um, but we, we defend the pawn, knight c3. Not, not e5, because that drops, that drops the pawn on d5. And, and d6, which a lot of people are tempted by in such positions, is premature. Because then we drop e4, and we're going to lose the d6 pawn. Okay. We're going to lose the d6 one. d6, that's a good move. I was really hoping that he would go e takes d5, which would be wrong. Now, there's multiple ways to play such a position with white, and don't feel like white is winning or anything. White's just solidly better, but it's not like we are, you know, in, in amazing, you know, it's not like we're winning. Now, we have a positional approach and a more tactical approach. We can take on e6 and keep the center open, and white is better. White is definitely better. Um, so we can kind of go after him here. And I think given that we have a lead in development, it makes sense to do that. The other approach is to play the positional move a4, preventing, of course, Black's main idea, which is b5. It's a, largely a matter of taste, but I, you know, I feel like with white, we should go for a more principled approach. Let's play t takes e6. Now, what should we do in this position? Of course, we can develop. We can play bishop f4, bishop g5. But I'm giving you guys a hint by talking about principle of play. This might not be the best thing that we can do. But I still, I feel like playing ambitiously here, really trying to punish black. Now, e5, d takes e5 leads to an endgame. That's not what we want. That's not what we want. We want to make a move that, in many cases, is extremely superficial. And I've discouraged against this particular move in many types of positions. But in this situation, this move has a very specific aim in mind uh, to, to destroy Black's pawn structure and to get rid of this bishop on e6. And that's the move knight g5. But what do we want? We want to take the bishop on e6 and at the end, get the bishop out to c4 and hit, it, hit him where it hurts on that e6 pawn. And if the bishop moves away, then bishop c4 is going to be totally crushing. That threat against f7 is going to be incredibly nasty. Knight g5 might not be the best, and I think that if I were playing black here, I would simply develop with knight c6. I wouldn't go h6 because such moves are bad because we want to take the bishop anyway, right? So it doesn't make sense to go h6. Furthermore, it weakens this diagonal at the end. Yeah, bishop g4. I mean, bishop g4 is not, not a dangerous threat. We can go f3. Or we could even go bishop e2 and trade the light squared bishops, and then we have very nice control of the d5 square. What should black do here? As I said, I think knight c6 is the best move. 
Uh, B5 could also be considered, though it's very dangerous to continue not developing. And I think we have multiple ways to punish him for that. I would I would uh, go knight c6 here, and then knight takes c6, f takes c6. We're going to play bishop c4, and white is better, but the game is not over. Instead, he blunders. Instead, he blunders a piece. I mean, this walks right into, of course, knight takes e6, and we're going to win the knight. I think he had internet problems, and that might have distracted him. And yeah, this type of play often works. So at this level, you know, don't be afraid to to go for something like this if you know what you're doing, right? Don't play a move like knight g5 just because it looks cool. M make a move like this when you have a very specific aim in mind, such as, yeah, I want to take on e6. I want to eliminate the light squared bishop, and then I want to attack the pawn that's going to be on that weak square. Yeah, black can try queen h4, but then we go g3, hitting the queen and preventing checkmate. And if black plays queen f6, we have multiple moves, including the simple queen takes g4. Anyway. Yeah, I think he might resign. Okay, knight f2. Yeah, so what's the mo let's try to be accurate here. I think a lot of people would just instantly grab this. We have a, a fundamentally we have a choice. We can play knight takes d8. Um, and simplify into an endgame up a piece. We can play um, king takes f2, but we have a third move. And I think that third move... Okay, so he ends up disconnecting. I think that third move is even more accurate, though. And what am I talking about? No, not queen f3. Well, queen f3 I like also, because then we can take with the queen on f2, and we um, we preserve the right to castle. I like the move queen h5 pinning the pawn. Really going for the most, going for the throw. We're pinning the pawn, we're still attacking the knight, and we're attacking the queen. And after queen f6, rather than knight c7 check, which I think is not the most accurate, although still completely winning, there is a very typical concept in such positions, which wins on the spot. What am I talking about? Knight d5, boom. And of course, if queen e6, the knight c7 wins the queen. So, multiple ways to win in this position. But in any case, I think queen h5 ends the game anyway. Not much to talk about here. This is just bad opening play by black. Um, the one thing I will say is that against, against uh, e takes d5, who can tell me the proper approach here? And this is a common, common oversight at, at, at the lower levels. Yeah, g6 maybe keeps black in the game a little bit longer. I agree. Yeah, and that's e5. And then I've seen this so many times. People will often play d4 and feel feel cool. But white wins a piece here. E f6, d c3. And now there's a cold shower waiting and queen e2 check. Right? And the spawn in f6 is defending e7. This is you can win win a bunch of games like this. Or or queen takes e7, just force the queen trade. And if white or if black goes knight e4, then knight d5 is a total disaster. I mean, you're gonna go bishop d3, and the knight's just gonna be trapped there. White has a big lead in development and a positional advantage. So just file this away into your mental directory that you ne you never should just automatically recapture in the center. These moves that push the pawn forward uh, can be very dangerous. Okay, so d6, we decided to take on e6. The approach, alternate approach was a4, which leads to this type of structure. I once lost a game like this with black. I used to experiment with the move c5 here with black, and there was one game where I just got crushed in this structure. I just was incredibly cramped the whole game, and um, and I ended up kind of getting pushed off the board, and, and this really soured me on this line. Um, I, I don't have the game in the database, but in any case, uh, this is just not, not very fun. Okay. And that's going to end the stream for today, guys. What incredible support. Thank you so much. That was phenomenal. Um, I might play play a couple more Blitz games afterward, but uh, just going to and, and do some puzzles just as a warm-up. So tomorrow I am doing Puzzle Battle World Championship at 12 p.m. noon Eastern time. Uh, so feel free to tune in. I'll do my best. Can't guarantee that I'll qualify. And if I don't qualify, I will be commentating the ensuing rounds. Thank you guys so much. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Thanks again a ton for all the support. See you guys tomorrow.